Okay, so we talked about uh, break-induced replication. Now I'm going to start talking about the other mechanisms of homologous recombination. And I'm going to actually start with one that is by far the simplest called single-strand annealing. In single-strand annealing, there's been a double-strand break. Um, and that double-strand break um, is acted upon by those exonucleases, here represented by Pac-Man, uh, chewing away the DNA um, until there are long regions of single-stranded DNA. And when enough single-stranded DNA has been exposed, there's a, a probability that there will be the exposure of sequences which are repeated on both sides of the double-strand break. Here, um, this sequence is Watson, and this sequence over here is Crick, and those can, can then anneal, which is where the, the pro process gets its name, single-strand annealing, to form a, a duplex, which has these extra tails, which are these additional pieces of DNA. Those tails can be clipped off, and, and we know uh, the enzymes that do that. Um, and, and once they have uh, clipped these uh, regions off, DNA polymerases can come and fill in these little gaps. And what one ends up with is a deletion, which has removed all the DNA sequences uh, from the point where, um, where, where the two repeated sequences are and made a deletion. So this is a potent source of deletions, especially in cells that have much repeated DNA uh, in, in their genomes. And in yeast, uh, we often have to put artificially repeated sequences in places that we want to study this process because there's almost no repeated uh, sequences in the yeast genome, but in humans, uh, a huge part of the human genome is made up of repeated sequences. There are, for example, something on the order of 500,000 copies of a 300 base pair sequence called ALU, um, and that these ALU sequences can serve as the termini for deletion events in between them, which are caused by this uh, single-strand annealing process. Now, uh, you might wonder how, how long this process can occur. Um, we've been able, in, in, again, in budding yeast, where there aren't a lot of other uh, repeated sequences to show, that we could take those blue sequences and put them as far apart as 100 kilobases, and we can actually cause making a, a, a double-strand break, as I'll show you uh, later, um, make a double-strand break, and these, these, this resection process will go for 100 kilobases and eventually allow those sequences to be joined. Um, it's been recognized for a long time that ALU sequences are the endpoints of a lot of chromosomal rearrangements that are associated with human disease. Um, this is just one example uh, from a paper from 1990 which suggested that these events arose by uh, crossover events, unequal recombination events between different ALU repeats in two different copies of, this, of the two sister chromatid copies of the same gene that would produce um, this deletion, but I think it is in fact more likely that these have ha occurred by a break on this chromatid and then the chewing away of the DNA in both cases so that one ends up with, uh, with uh, single-strand annealing, which has produced the same uh, deletion.